60 seconds to air. Please, I got a problem with camera three. I need a book of it, she's straight down. Okay, Woody, can you run in on that one? Are you, is that a book of it or a book of it? Cookie, I'm going to need some contestant names. Got it. You want to, you want okay. to, got it? Hang okay, on. here we go. You're okay, everybody, one. I need, I need to focus. Let's do okay. a, uh, two. Contestants, how you doing? Welcome to our show. Why don't you tell me how many people are going to be playing this game? Hey, you're a single player, is that right? All right, could you give me your name, please? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, singers. You guys got that in there? Yeah. Right. Are 19 players? Okay, you want to do a seven-question game or you want 21? Thanks, babe. 30 seconds. Okay, your buzzer is B as in uh, beer bong or, or just plain bong. Okay, guys, that's good. Thanks. Okay, Hal, can we cue the commercial? You got it. 20 seconds. On the end of it. Okay, 20 seconds. Pay attention here and don't screw it up. As soon as you think you know the answer to a question, buzz in. Then you got to hit the number that corresponds to the answer you want. You got that? Okay, I need everybody to be quiet. I need to be quiet now. Okay, lose the desktop. Cue graphics. Sound effects on deck. Okay, go to black. Let's go. Barking Billies, where your pet fat is doggone. show okay you ready to fly time for blast off all right come on hit me we need a category it's number one. all right let's see what we're doing here playing doctor with tweezers and electricity okay it shouldn't be too tough this question's going to be worth a grand remember the electrical game operation by milton bradley which of the following is the best explanation for why the patient's nose lights up and a buzzer sounds when a player botches a procedure during a game of operation? The operating doctor is grounded, the electrical circuit is closed, the direct current is alternated, or the operating tool is positively charged. Hitting the metal edges with the metal tweezers completes the circuit. But I have an idea for a really exciting game of operation. Wire a brain surgeon to an electric generator. I got it. Don't touch the Hit me with the category. Whoop de do It's question number two. The name of this category is Wacky Zoo Tours. I'm paying out $2,000 if you get this one right. Okay, let's get this ball rolling. The guy at the zoo says, The spotted owl is just one of many birds on the endangered species list. This is an example of what? Conundrum, rebus, malapropism, or palindrome? A malapropism is a humorous misusage of a word. Apparently, the guy's related to Norm Crosby. Okay, pick a category. Ooh, it's question number three. The category is Fred, Barney, and Lunch Meat. Okay, this one might be a toughie. It's worth 3,000 bucks. Get your eyes focused on the screen. Here we go. Now, we all know Fred Flintstone loved his brontosaurus burgers, but which of these dinosaurs would have loved to have slapped Fred's ass into a Kaiser roll? Allosaurus, Brachiosaurus, Stegosaurus, or Triceratops? Allosaurus. The only meat eater in the bunch. How about it? Hit me with a category. You're my question for forevermore. I love you. My question for. Here's the category. Beat the Meatles. A right answer will get you two G's for this question. Okay, get your fingers ready. Let's get busy. The red light beacon atop the Capitol Records building in Los Angeles blinks what Morse code message? All is dead. Look out. Hollywood or Capitol Records? It blinks Hollywood. And from the Capitol Records building, which actually looks like a stack of records, you can see the Hollywood sign. All right, come on, hit me. We need a category. Uh-oh, best butts fits mine, whore. It's time for a Snickerfish restaurant. All right, now here's your category for this gibberish question. Hair transplants and sports arenas. The opening value is $5,000. 
Okay, now remember, you don't have all the time in the world here. The less time you take, the more money you make. You ready? What snappy comeback does this rhyme with? Click and fit hair, a fun won't line. Okay, let's see if you know it. Type in your answer and hit return. Careful, if you stick it too far, you'll need a proctologist to find it again. Okay, pick a category. Ba -ba -ba -bum. Number six, it's number six, it's the category. Perky blonde hostesses and gifted veterinarians. And it looks like you can win a thousand greenbacks for this one. Okay, get yourself set, it's time. Which task would best make use of the talents of Julie McCoy from The Love Boat and Dr. Doolittle? Running the Texas Dude Ranch, coordinating activities on Noah's Ark, producing late night at the Acropolis, or serving drinks at SeaWorld? Coordinating activities on Noah's Ark. Elephants on the Lido deck. Elephants on the Lido deck. How about it? Hit me with a category. This one's gonna be happy anniversary. And this one's gonna be worth $2,000. Flight attendants, prepare for takeoff. You're a traditionalist and you're broke on your 12th wedding anniversary. What object in your bedroom can you wrap up and present to your spouse? An empty champagne bottle, soiled bed linens, your gold tooth, or burnt candle stubs? Nah, it's all right, you can wait for that to fall out naturally. Gold is the 50th anniversary present. In case you're curious about the correct answer, soiled bed linens. The 12th anniversary calls for gifts made of linen. All right, come on, hit me. We need a category. Yeah, man, come along to question eight. The category behind this question is Gumby and Taxonomy. And this one's going to be worth $3,000. Okay, hang tight. Put your fingers on your buzzers. Here's the question. All right, let's say you want to figure out the scientific classification for Gumby. Why would it be wrong to place him in the genus Homo, as in Homo gumbiensis? Because Gumby stands up, right? Gumby is not a primate. Gumby is warm-blooded. Or Gumby is not a modern human. And let's see the correct answer. No, the little green freak is not a primate. Which means he's not a mammal, he doesn't have any hair, and he doesn't have any milk-producing mammary glands. Okay, pick a category. Number nine. Do it, do, 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 do. Next up, bullfights and the French tourist board. You get this one right, you got 2,000 bucks coming at you. Okay, we're coming at you, heads up. If French tourists at a bullfight in Madrid heard shouts of What would they logically do next if they took the shouts literally? Become insulted, shower the matador with milk, stand up and take a bow, or start singing? In French, ole means with milk. How about it? Hit me with a category. The category is, who's not on first? This question's gonna be worth $2,001 bills. Hope you're ready, cause here's one coming at you. In their movies, whom did Abbott and Costello not meet? The Mummy, Captain Kidd, Dracula, or Frankenstein? Dracula. I don't know, I guess they just don't get slapstick in Transylvania. Okay, we're at the end of round one, now on to round two. Now, we are one round away from the jack attack, and all the questions in this round are going to be worth more than a round one. So pay attention, and let's do it. All right, come on, hit me. We need a category. And now, 11. The name of this category is Pip Tips. And if you can figure this one out, I can pay you 4,000 bucks. All right, now suppose you're watching the main character from Charles Dickens' novel Great Expectations playing a popular childhood game. If Pip is a Pip at placing his Pips properly, what popular pastime is Pip properly playing? Penny Pitchy, Marbles, Tiddlywinks, or Dominoes? Those little dots on the domino tiles are called Pips. I don't know if that's where Gladys Knight got the name or not. How about it? Hit me with a category. Uh-oh! West Truck licks nine more! 
Once again, it's time for a Flicker Pitch No Scope. The category for this gibberish question? Folks unfamiliar with the concept of backwash. The opening value for this gibberish question is going to be 10,000 bucks. Okay, to solve this puzzle, you got to think fast because every second and a half, I'm ticking off a little bit of cash. All right, don't let the punctuation fool you. What commercial tagline does this rhyme with? Chewed tuna, fast plop. Yeah, one tuna sandwich. Okay, let's see what you got. Start typing and hit return when you're done. Nice job. Let me buy you a cup of coffee. Maxwell House. Chew tuna fast plop. You know what makes it especially good to the last drop? When all the sugar collects at the bottom of the cup. Okay, pick a category. Black cat, heart attack, do you nightmare when you dream? Are you feeling lucky? It's number 13. All right, let's see what we're doing here. Melanoma and the end of time. You get this question right, you pocket six grand. Get ready to buzz, because here it comes. Word gets out that the sun is about to be extinguished. About how much tanning time do you have once the last ray leaves the sun? Seven seconds, eight minutes, nine hours, or ten weeks? Eight minutes. At light speed, the sun is eight minutes away. Eight minutes also happens to be the exact amount of time necessary to review all of the interesting bicentennial minutes broadcast in the mid-70s. Just thought you'd like to know. All right, come on, hit me. We need a category. 14! Here's the category. CB lingo. And this one shouldn't be too tough. 4K for this one. All right, listen carefully. You're trucking on down a sunny stretch of I-74 in your Mack truck. You're westbound in light traffic just outside Peoria at 1.14 p.m. Someone comes on the radio and asks you for a 10.33. What's your response? Peoria, 1.14 p.m. It's sunny or traffic's light. Gonna have to dock you for that. Here's what you should have guessed. Your buddy's asking for a time check, and it's probably time for his amphetamines. How about it? Hit me with a category. Uh-oh, mess butt tit slime chore. Once again, it's time for a ticklish past go. Here's your gibberish category. Biblical names and crappy poetry. And if you're really fast, you can get up to 10,000 bucks for this gibberish question. Now, you're going to have about 30 seconds to solve this puzzle, but I'm going to be taking a little bit of money away every second and a half. Now tell me, with what piece of greeting card poetry does this rhyme? Moses, card dead. Buy a Vets car. New. Go for it. Type in your answer and hit return. And you know, I always thought violets were violet. Go figure. Kid songs are so confusing. Okay, pick a category. Question number 16. And I like it too. The category. What about Bosley? 6,000 bucks is riding on this one. Hang on tight, because here we go. According to medieval Christianity, if Charlie's angels really were angels, who would have the highest rank? Tiffany the Throne, Sabrina the Seraph, Kelly the Archangel, or Chris the Cherub? Sabrina the Seraph. And she's also the smart one that does car commercials now. Alright, come on, hit me. We need a category. This one's going to be Irony and English Kings. I know it's irony. I'm just checking to see if you're on your toes. I'm paying out $2,000 if you get this one right. Okay, get your fingers ready. Let's get busy. Why could the reign of the English King George I be thought of as an ironic one? He became king three days after he died. His father's name was also George I. He was allergic to iron or he spoke little, if any, English. He barely spoke English. He was the German king of England. How about it? Hit me with a category. Eighteen. the slay clean. Number eighteen. Next up, 
We built this sitcom. A right answer will get you two G's for this question. All right. You're having a house designed by architect Mike Brady. The rocks for the foundation are being provided by quarry worker Fred Flintstone, and the tools are being provided by tool and die doc foreman Archie Bunker. Which of the following characters would be most able to help you finance this dream home with a bank loan? Darren Stevens, Fred Sanford, Milburn Drysdale, or George Jefferson? Milburn Drysdale. He's the Beverly Hillbillies banker. Me? I'd be happy if he'd introduce me to Ellie Mae. Okay, pick a category. The category behind this question is elevators and smooth operators. I'll pay you $4,000 bills for this one if you get it right. Flight attendants, prepare for takeoff. If you were stuck in an elevator with the following characters and your appendix were about to burst, which of these doctors would be the least helpful? Major Frank Burns, Doc from the Love Boat, Dr. Bob Hartley, or Quincy M.E.? Dr. Bob, he is a psychologist, but he's not an M.D. However, he could help your appendix with its separation anxiety. How about it? Hit me with a category. Ooh, ah, question number 20. Here's the category. Those poor innocent polyesters. It's going to be worth $4,000. Okay, let's get this ball rolling. Which of these actually does exist? A mo as in mohair, a naga as in naga hide, an angora sheep as in angora wool, or a chamois as in chamois cloth? Well, there's Angora goats, but they produce mohair. Go figure. Now, the correct answer is... If you happen to see a goat antelope-like animal wandering around the Mediterranean, that's a chamois. Think about that the next time you wipe down your car. All right, come on, hit me. We need a category. you're doing will make sure your match fits this clue dome sweet dome keep that in mind put your finger on your buzzer here we go good luck about it. Of course, it's not like you had any competition to make it a real challenge or anything, but, you know, that's not the point. The point is, you don't know Jack. Okay, great show, everybody. Um, Cookie, what's the plan here with the contestants? Uh, listen, excuse me, uh, whenever you feel like playing again, you just gotta let me know, all right? Hi, I'm Donnie Dunghill, and this is my son, Donnie. Hey, how you doing? Yeah, anyways, we're the owners of the Dunghill Burial Emporium, and sons. Unfortunately, we have lost our lease, and now we must have special clearance sale, because they are kicking our ass out. Oh, well, easy come, easy go. But here's the good news. Go ahead, Donnie. Why don't you tell them our coffins have been chosen by more families than the other guys? Tell them that the name Dung Hill has been synonymous with quality since 1940 and 2. You said it, Pop. Yeah, and one other thing. 
With our clearance sale, everything must go. That means we're selling our finest mahogany caskets and concrete burial receptacles right, for Pop. dirt cheap. Isn't that right, Donnie? So anyways, if you need to bury a loved one, please do it before the end of the month with Gunk Hill Burial Emporium and Sons. We bury the competition. Yeah, you got it right, Donnie. Scrambled eggs with a side of Smokies. Coming up. We're at exit 37 at the renowned Bob's Diner truck stop, where the customers are as demanding as they are driven. Hey, Sally. How about a little half and half for my coffee here? Here you go. They don't know it, but we've secretly replaced their normal coffee creamer with Mama's Pride Human Breast Milk Creamer. Sally? You guys switched coffee or something? This tastes great. It's so rich and strangely comforting. Excuse me, sir. Huh? Where the hell'd you... Hey, aren't you that trivia game show guy? It's not the coffee. It's the creamer. Mama's Pride Human Breast Milk Creamer. I'm drinking human breast milk? That's right. It's richer, sweeter, and more nutritious. Human breast milk? Huh. Makes sense. Not just any breast milk. Mama's Pride human breast milk. Baby yourself with Mama's Pride. Hi, kids. <laughs> I'm Oinky, the Bobby Piggy. And I want you to try my brand spanking new breakfast cereal, Oinky's Barbecued Puffed Pork Cracklins. <laughs> Honey baked flakes with chunks of spit roasted pork. They were puffed out to look like tiny little bees. <laughs> like me. I'm Oinky. <laughs> hey Oinky, um, I'd love to try your cereal, but my religion forbids you. Um, what should I do? <laughs> I'm the other white meat. <laughs> and I've been sanitized, bathed, and blessed by every major religion in the world. <laughs> Whoa! Go ahead. Take a bite! Mm. Oinky, you're porktastic. I could pig out on you all day. <laughs> I love you, Oinky. <laughs> <laughs>